Hi everyone, Brad Valens Chess here with special guest, the Here Shot Kid 93. As you know, we are bringing you chess videos to help you improve your game and maybe help us improve as well. And today we're going to look over a very famous game done by one of arguably the greatest chess player of his century, one of the best attacking players of all time, Paul Murphy. And this is his famous opera game. He's playing white against some Earl or Duke or something like that. Someone important. He opens up the game with e4. So technically he should lose right out of the bat, but... <laughs> very common response, e5. Still very popular today. Knight f3, most played move in this position. d6. This is the... Philidor defense, and uh, not very popular today, often considered fairly passive uh, as it blocks in Black's dark square bishop right away. Uh, d4, a good approach to open up the center. Bishop g4, now this is a mistake. Uh, Shannon, would you like to tell them why this is a mistake? Do you know? Well, um, when Black now... Uh, can't trade the uh, um, when white takes um, from D to E black can't take back um, because it will open up the queen um, leaving the bishop uh, the knight to win the pawn yeah just and, uh, that's exactly what he played he played D takes E5 now uh, Murphy's opponent realizing that as Shannon said if he takes back with his pawn now the queens will be traded, and white's knight on f3 will be able to capture black's e-pawn. So instead, uh, black makes the correct choice in this situation by playing bishop takes f3, forcing the queen to take back, and now black can make the recapture on e5. But uh, this leaves really good developing chances for white with his move uh, bishop to c4. Now this looks like a scholar's mate, something that you typically don't want to go for, but the fact that Murphy can develop so quickly and with tempo against f7 is what makes it a really good move. Knight f6 blocks it, and a very uh, nice queen move by Murphy up here, creating a double attack. And what we got here? Yeah, b3, the queen will... Uh, drop behind the the bishop and uh, put a little more pressure on the uh, the f7 pawn also attacking the b7 pawn it's a nice little fork so already black is feeling right out of the opening on move 7 uh, white has a lot of pressure so and there's there's not a really good way there's no way to deal with this double attack too well uh, kind of an awkward queen move, queen e7, blocking in uh, black's dark square bishop. And the hope for black now, the main idea behind queen e7, is that if white chooses to take the pawn on b7, white can play queen to b4 check, forcing a queen trade. But Paul Murphy... Uh, very ahead of his time, very big on modern day principles. Uh, just stuck with the developing theme and played a very strong knight c3. Now uh, black has absolutely no opportunity to check, so now the b-pawn is threatened. c6 here is a good move um, because it um, not only protects the, the um, b7 pawn, uh, from the queen uh, with black's queen, but it also um, stops the knight from coming in uh, on the uh, the b file there. The bishop is just going to pin the uh, the knight against the queen now, and um, um, what's White's next, or Black's next move, rather, is, it, it appears to be a pretty good one. It's, it's B5, which would be normally pretty good in the situation. It, 
uh, expands on the queen side and hits the bishop. Black hoping for a bishop retreat maybe to uh, d3 or e2. But the fact that uh, white is so far ahead in development and position lets him use his knight for a very nice positional combination. And after the knight is recaptured, the bishop can capture on b5 with check. Leaving the only real good move is to block with the knight, because if he blocked with the other knight, the queen would hang. And if he took with the queen, or if he blocked with the queen, rather, it would just be taken. And if the king moves, he wouldn't be able to castle. This is a nice little move by White, um, and uh, it's going it's going to eventually um, put Black in a position where um, White's again going to trade off some material for um, lesser point values, but uh, put White in a position where they can um, they can do some serious damage with a nice sack. Yeah, all all the uh, pins. On these knights are they're really starting to show uh, all the pressure from right right on this knight is just is just gonna be a little bit too much for black to handle black does try to defend playing rook to d8 but a really nice sack and display of the power of development position is rook takes d7 sacrificing the exchange and after rook takes because anything else would be a loss of material the last of White's pieces comes into the game. And you can just see White's material disadvantage doesn't really matter because all of Black's pieces on the king side are just tied down. This rook isn't doing anything. This bishop isn't doing anything. This knight is pinned, and this rook is pinned. So Black has to do something about the immediate threat of rook takes rook. It attempts to do that with queen to e6 offering a queen trade and freeing up Black's knight to recapture on e7. And after bishop takes rook check, knight takes d7, a really, really beautiful way to finish off the game. We got Shannon with yet uh, yet another uh, sack. The third um, in this game, the queen is going to drop down on the B file uh, to B8 uh, with a check, forcing the knight to recapture, allowing the beautiful uh, rook to D8 for checkmate. It's defended by the bishop. Yeah, a really good game by Paul Murphy, really showing great examples of modern day principles, great tactics with pins, and showing that development is extremely important and king safety uh, is just... Uh, the, the real main point in this game is if, if you have a lead in development and your opponent's king is in the center, it's a great idea to open up the center where you can attack it. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.